Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. What we're going to do in this video is learn how to find the charge on our cation. That's our positively charged ion. The reason that's important is that the oxygen charge I can predict from the periodic table. But iron is in the D block of the periodic table where we can't predict the charge. And so that means the way we tell its charge often is when it's in a compound, we can look at the total negative charge from oxygen or whatever the anion is and know that that matches the total positive charge and then figure it out. This is important when we're going from the formula of an ionic compound to writing the name. So let's do a few practice problems. All right, let's say we have iron with two oxygens, like we just said. Here's the steps. First, we're going to write the charge on our anion. Okay, so oxygen, if I look at the periodic table, I know that it's 2 minus. And further, I know that I have two of these. How do I know I have two of these? Well, there's a 2 right there. So that 2 is telling me there's two oxygens. And then I'm going to add up the negative charge. 2 and 2 gives me a minus 4. Okay, now over in this column in the orange, I'm going to put the positive charge. So here we're putting our positive stuff. And here we're putting our negative stuff. And now I'm going to write how many irons I have. I just have one. And the whole goal is to get the charge on an individual iron. Now, I know these two down here have to match. So where I have negative 4 here, I have plus 4 here. So they match with the sign change. And now I distribute that plus 4 across how many irons I have. So if I had more than one iron, it would get distributed across the more than one iron. In this case, I just have one. So that means my one iron must give a plus 4. So that must be the charge on my iron. If I was writing the name of this compound, that would mean that plus 4 would tell me that I would write Roman numerals of 4. Which you'll get to in a future video if you don't know it now. Alright, let's do another one. Here I have manganese, two of them, with three sulfurs. So once again, I'm going to write all my sulfurs on the right. Sulfur, sulfur, sulfur. And I'm going to write all my manganeses on the left. Manganese, manganese. And remember, the goal is to get those question marks. Sulfur, I can get from the periodic table. I know it's minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. When I add up the charges on the anions, I'm going to get a minus 6. That matches the total positive charge on the left. Gives me a plus 6. Now I distribute. So if I have two things that add up to plus 6, what must that be? Well, basically, I'm dividing 6 by 2, right? So I get plus 3 on each of them. And so that's the answer. And again, if I was naming, that plus 3 would tell me that I should put a Roman numeral of 3 into my name for this compound. All right, one more. Let's do FeCl3. Let's once again write my three chlorines. I have three because there's a 3 right there. And I have just one iron. All right, writing the charge on my chlorines, I have minus 1, minus 1, and minus 1. Those add up to minus 3. I know that has to match over here, which gives me the plus 3. And when I distribute that across just the one iron, I get plus 3. Again, that tells me that I would use a Roman numerals of 3 if I were writing the name of this compound. Okay, so that's a quick and easy way to go from the charge on your anion to the charge on your cation. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry.